Thus says the Lord, Search thine house in order, for thou shalt die, and not live. Thou shalt die, and not live. It's good to know our Heavenly Father. You will know the Father. You know him already. You know him more and more and more in Jesus' name. This man, Ezekiah, he knew his father. He knew there are some things the father will say, and that's final. There are some things the father will say, and the father is still considering, I will do this. But if it doesn't go well with him, we'll talk about it together. And tonight, we'll talk about it together. Those things in your life, we'll talk about them together. Say amen. amen. And so in verse 2, in verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall. He didn't say, I say I come. You're a prophet of God. What did God tell you as to the reason I am dying now? Because in my heart, I don't want to die yet. But what did God tell you? You can talk to God directly. Tonight, you'll talk to God directly. And everything to be reversed in your life, you will reverse it with your tongue. Amen. Then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, Look at verse 3. In verse 3, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. He said, God, you know. When I was walking before you, I wanted to have a longer time to keep on walking before you. I, I wasn't thinking that, you know, my life will stop at this time. God, have you looked at my family? There's no child yet. I'm a king. I still want a child. You'll get what you want. God, have you seen all these neighboring country, countries, they are waging war? I want to see victory. You will see what you are looking for. And so he said, Lord, remember, remember how I have walked before thee in truth. I'm with a perfect touch and I have done that which is good in thy sight and I was doing all that for a reason that your promises of a yes and amen in my life how will this happen how will this happen now if you say no to death death will run away if you say no to the devil the devil will run away if you say no to disease Disease will run away in Jesus' name. <laughs> if you say no to that demon, that demon will run away. Yeah. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and it came to pass, it will come to pass in your life. Miracle, it will come to pass in your life. It says, before, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him. Negative prophecies will change. Yeah. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. God recognized that man. The captain of my people. He will recognize you. Yeah. Where are you? Heaven will recognize you. Yeah. The captain of my people. Thus says the Lord 
God, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. Isaiah did not join him in the prayer, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. All the people at the court did not join him in the prayer, I have heard thy prayer. The prayer was against the negative prophecy that came to him. I have heard thy prayer. Tonight, that's what God is telling you. I have heard your prayer. That also has stayed there for too long. It will go. The cancer threatening your life too long. It will have to go. Blind eyes, blindness, disturbing your life. How can I see? How can I go out now? I need help before I can go out. What do you want? I want my sight. He has answered your prayer. Poverty. Having to live from hand to mouth. Lord, this is not good. I have to beg, I have to plead before I eat. Okay, what do you want? I want a job of my own. I want to earn money for myself. You have got it. Whatever you declare tonight, you have in Jesus' name. Then you say, I've had your prayer. I have seen thy tears. You will weep no more. Your tears, everything will dry up. And then it says, I will heal thee. What is it? I will heal thee. Goiter will vanish away. The pain will vanish away. Arthritis will vanish away. Joint pains will vanish away. Blood issuing from your body will vanish away. Blood sugar. Toilet, toilet, toilet. Day, night, day, night. Everything they call diabetes. Number one. Diabetes number two, diabetes number three, diabetes whatever number. Vanish away in your life in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, you are healed in Jesus' name. And whatever else, whatever is knocking your brain, knocking your mind, knocking your heart, knocking your liver, knocking your kidney, knocking anywhere in your life tonight. Healed in Jesus' name. I will heal thee. And on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what Ezekiah was expecting. That's why he prayed. That's why he turned his face to the wall. And before he began to say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, the Lord said, hold on, hold on. God has not finished with you. I said, God has not finished with you. Look at verse 6, verse 6, and I will add, add, add. No subtraction in my life anymore. I said, no subtraction in my life anymore. The Lord said, I will add to thy days. How many years? For me? For me? After the end of that cancer, because the cancer will end, the Lord will add healthy years to your life in Jesus' name. After the end of that painful, terrible, money-sucking disease in your life, because it will end. 
I said it will end. The Lord will add more years of health, of strength, of joy, of happiness, of success in your life in Jesus' name. And I will deliver this city out of the out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Look at three things quickly. Number one, number one, the turn, turning to God with his word in your mouth. Don't bring any other word. Look at Osea chapter 14, verse 2. You turn to God with his word in your mouth. Take with you words and turn to the Lord and say unto him, take away all iniquity. You know, the Lord is even teaching those who don't know how to pray. Yes, I want to pray. I want to talk to God. I want to have the blessing of God. What will I say to God? What word will I give him? Turn to the Lord and take with your words and say, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we tender, render the render the calves of our leaves. He has told us how to pray. When you say, Heal me, he puts that word in our mouth. He will do as he has put in our mouth in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Number two, turning to his grace with his wonders on our mind. His wonders on our mind. His wonders on our mind. When we come to God and we turn to him, we are turning to him with grace, expecting the wonders in our mind. In Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 5. Remember the, his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. When you come to God in prayer, don't concentrate on your pain or your problem, on your sickness, on your disease, on your arthritis. Remember, it's wonders. He's done it for other people. He saved other people. Remember that. He healed other people. He will heal you. I said, He will heal you. You turn to Him in his grace with his wonders on your mind look at number three number three you're turning to his goodness in his way for your miracle you turn to him and you bring his word to him and you're expecting his miracle to come where are you miracle must come there tonight I said, miracle must come there tonight. And look at this. Isaiah chapter 30. And we're reading from verse 21. Isaiah 30 verse 21. And then ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right, or turn to the ledge as you are walking and moving you want to turn here you want to turn there you'll hear the voice of the lord behind you this is the way the way to pray this is the way the way to progress this is the way the way to achieve this is the way the way to so pray and so walk that your life will please the lord walk ye in each when you do what will happen verse 26 in verse 26 it says moreover the light of the moon shall be at the light of the sun. God will so make a transformation that the moon with the weak light 
the light that will come from the moon will be like the light of the sun. So that if you're weak, if you're dull, if you're powerless, if you're anemic, it's if like life is going out and the light that is coming, the voice that is coming, the entrance that is coming, and everything looks like the light of the moon. And it's dim immediately after prayer tonight, that light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. Sunshine in your life. Happiness in your life. And the sun with healing in his wings in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. What he, I am not sick, I am not weak, and I walk in the way he has ordained, and I pray tonight in the way he has ordained. Look at what follows, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold at the light of seven days in your life your righteousness multiplied your happiness multiplied your victory multiplied your deliverance will turn to dominion and your dominion multiplied and the strength of the Lord in your life multiplied and your speed in life as you are moving on will be multiplied in Jesus' name. The sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth and healeth and healers the stroke of their wound. The stroke of your wound healed. The long standing wound of that sugar condition healed tonight. And the wound and the pain and the lacerations in your, in your intestine inside you and all the pain you're feeling inside there heal tonight in Jesus name and the life that is torn apart and confused and it's like what am I going to do now Christ has done it it is done and you will see it it is done and I will see it all we need to do is to turn to the Lord with his word in our mouth, his wonders on our mind, and his way, his way towards the miracle. Your time has now come. You must have it tonight. It's bowed, and eyes closed. It's bowed, and eyes closed. You want to come unto Christ the light of the world. And you want the darkness in your life to vanish away. You want the pain, the problem, the punishment of your sin to be taken away. And you want to have the freedom, the salvation that Christ provided for you on the cross of Calvary. Here is your time. You turn away from your thoughts. You turn away from the bad tongue the tongue that has been getting into trouble and you want to say, I come to Christ tonight. Where are you? Raise up your hand. A night of turning to God. A night of giving yourself fully or reservedly unto God so that a new change will come. Transformation will come. Forgiveness will come. And the salvation of God. God will come to you. So raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Raise up that hand. Anywhere you are, online, anywhere you are, raise up those hands. Tonight is the night of transformation, salvation, regeneration, and total change in your life. Raise up the hand. Raise up your hand. Please, please, wherever you are, you stand up. 
God bless you. God bless you. You stand up. You say, yes, I want that salvation. I want that forgiveness. And I want that change. And I want that change. The grace of God to come into my life. Raise up that hand and, and stand up. And say, yes, I am here. Yes, I am here. And the Lord will forgive you. I said, the Lord will forgive you. When we, when we come before the Lord and we have the chance to repent and to turn and to give our lives to the Lord, there's no shame. We just say, yes, I am here. And the Lord is going to bring forgiveness to your life in Jesus' name. Turn from your unrighteous thoughts and turn from your wicked ways and turn from the wrong use of your tongue in the past. I'm praying for you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, all these who have turned to you here and everywhere else, I pray you forgive them and give them your salvation with its joy in Jesus' name. Take away the guilt, take away the condemnation, and Lord, I pray right now, their names will enter into the book of life in heaven in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our leaders should get to them. Our ushers get to them. You give them the paper to fill. And we'll follow up on them later. Online, let's do that. Every congregation, wherever you are, let's get that done. And as you have turned, you'll not go back to those things you turned away from in Jesus' name. Let them just say amen. amen. Now, tonight, the night of I thought you'd tell me. I thought you'd say what you expect. My night of. Will it happen? It will. I said it will. Let's understand the power of God does not change. The promises of God do not change. Everything we have heard will be reproduced in our lives. Identify that sickness here, online, everywhere. Make this night your night of supernatural wonders. The preaching is not just preaching. It's for performance performance in your life. Yeah. Blind eyes must open. Yeah. The lame must rise up and walk. Yeah. Long-standing ulcer must be healed. Yeah. And that devastating cancer must be healed tonight. Yeah. And all those demonic activities they must be stopped tonight. You raise up your hand. You lay your hand in the place where the challenge is. And then after the final amen, you will not rush out. You will rejoice for the miracle happening to you tonight. Because it must happen. Wonders must happen. Healing must happen. Deliverance must happen. Ready now? Catch it, it's coming your way. Father, in Jesus' name, we know the tongue determines destiny. Determines our healing. Determines our deliverance. Determines our soundness. 
determines our victory. We confess with our mouth. We receive now in Jesus' name. Every sickness, whatever time, long time has been there, whatever hold it has had on you there, I command sickness, come out in Jesus' name. That heavy chest, heavy heart, whatever is holding that chest or heart, be loose in Jesus' name. Issue of blood, dry up now in Jesus' name. Pile, be healed in Jesus' name. Prostrate cancer. The Lord touch you right now. The pain, the evidence there, I pray, miracle, deliverance, healing in your body in Jesus' name. Impaired speech. I ask now, Lord, you rectify their speech in Jesus' name. Ear problem, pain, pause coming out, the pause dry up now in Jesus' name. Deafness be healed in Jesus' name. One ear deaf, the other ear hearing slightly, complete, perfect healing in Jesus' name. The brain, I see there's something happening in that brain. You're always touching it, always holding it. Lord, I pray that infirmity in the brain, that confusion in the brain. Lord, I pray, heal them in Jesus' name. Something that looks like madness, as if in the public, you should remove your clothes and then be running around because everything is like scattered on the inside. Lord, I pray, touch them, heal them, deliver them in Jesus' name. Husband and wife, the man who could not perform, I pray, Whatever has weakened your system, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone. Satan trying to knock this way, knock that way. Any kind of disease, any kind of ailment, any kind of infirmity, I send forth healing to everyone now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Swelling in the tummy, come out in Jesus' name. Goiter, come out in Jesus' name. I problem pain, pain, terrible pain in the eyeball. And the eye breaking out water. And the dimness of sight. And the blindness, Lord, touch them. Heal them in Jesus' name. The problem in your throat inside, the swallow is a challenge. Be healed in Jesus' name. Everything your people ask for tonight, everything they open their mouth and they said, that's the miracle I need. That's the supernatural wonder I need. That's the healing I need. That's the progress I need. Oh Lord, this very moment, touch them with a touch of miracle. Receive what you came for. Receive what you desire. You receive it in your heart. You confess it with your mouth. 
It is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You have got it. You are now a miracle carrier. I said you are now a miracle carrier. Check off, check off. It's done. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I want to announce to you that in your life, in your family, in your business, everything surrounding you, nothing too hard for our God. He breaks every yoke, heals every sickness, and delivers the oppressed. You want to know you want to experience that tonight, nothing, absolutely nothing. It's impossible to have something great is coming in your life. Miracle. I call miracle upon you in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in the work of your hand that miracle has now arrived and you will not leave here like you came in Jesus name Father God of heaven God of earth creator and maker of everything your people are here they know you are the God of creation the God of redemption, the God of power, the God of all possibilities. That's why they have come. They have come here and all over, everywhere the message goes to, everyone has come because we know in the depth of our heart, nothing, absolutely nothing difficult for you. Tonight, you'll make it a night of wonders. A night of miracle, a night of power, a night to move mountains out of every life tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every heart. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're talking about faith. We're talking about active faith, mighty faith, powerful faith. We're talking about a mountain moving faith. We're talking about bulldozer faith. Give me a good day. amen. And everything, whether it's nature, whether it's devil, whether you were born like that, whatever it is, in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, the bulldozer faith, the mountain moving faith, the active faith will activate in your life your own faith. You will overcome and you have your miracle tonight in Jesus' name. Talking about faith, not ordinary faith, Active faith, practical faith, miracle working faith, mountain moving faith, active faith, and we're talking about the assurances we have. Assurance that our God, the present God, the perfect God, the omnipotent God, the one that has no impossibility, we have assurances tonight that as we receive the word, believe the word, act on the word, there will be the response from heaven, the miracle from heaven, the yoke-breaking power from heaven, 
activating and working in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the acts and the assurances of active faith. The acts, you act it out. You hear it, you see it, you believe it, you accept it, and you live, you act, you pray, you believe, and then you do as if you really believe the acts and the assurances. What we are sure of, what we are sure of, we act out. What we really know that we know, we act out. You are sure because of that, you act. And you act according to what God has said. And there will be a performance, there will be a fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. In my life, in my life, there will be a performance tonight. There will be a fulfillment tonight. Amen in your life. We're looking at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, that is the one thing is looking for. Do you believe I can do this? You say, yes, Lord. When Jesus hears that, do you know in the depth of your heart that I can move the mountain tonight? Yes, Lord. Do you believe that this long-standing problem, that tonight is the night, the supernatural power of God will take it away from you? And you say, yes, Lord. The moment you agree, the moment you affirm, the moment you know in your heart and you express your faith, you express your faith in action. You express your faith in a powerful, wonderful, practical way. This is what they did. The people I'm reading about here, they brought a paralytic man. And there was so much a crowd that they couldn't get in to get him to where Jesus was. And so, they, but they believed all they needed to do was to get the man in the presence of Christ. And they knew once that took place, what has been a long-standing problem, everything will vanish away. So, they thought, they didn't think the thoughts of unbelief. You see, if we think the thoughts of unbelief, we will have the actions of unbelief. If we think the thoughts of unbelief, we will go on the road of unbelief. And the road of unbelief never leads to salvation or to miracle or to power. But they thought... The thoughts of faith. And the thoughts of faith brought the action of faith. They went to the roof of that house. They located Jesus where Christ was. They removed a tile. And they lowered the man and put the man right there in front of Christ. And Jesus said, nobody can go that far in action in faith and not get something from him from heaven when jesus saw their faith he said to the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee and some of the people there who didn't have the understanding of who christ was and what Christ could do, and what the Father had ordained and authorized that Christ, his only begotten Son, could do. They began to say within themselves, how can this man, that was their problem, they saw him as man like themselves, religious man, traditional man, a Jewish man. How can this man just a man forgive 
the seeing of anyone when you have a limited understanding, a limited understanding of the name and the power and the might of Christ. You'll be thinking in your heart, how can this happen? How can this happen? Jesus is not ordinary man. He is Emmanuel. I said he is Emmanuel. God with us. And he says, and the Father has the power to give life. He also has the power to give life. He is Christ, the very Son of God. And so in verse 11, in verse 11, it says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. He didn't even have to touch the man. He didn't have to anoint the man with anything. He didn't have to lift up the man. He didn't have to shake the man because of his power. Irresistible power. Because of his power. Healing power. Because of his authority. He only had to say the word. I say unto thee. Arise. Take up thy bed. And go thy way into thine house. Look at verse 12. In verse 12. And. What do you see there? What word am I looking at? When is he going to happen to you tonight? When he will roll, roll your problems away? When will he destroy the works of the devil in your life tonight? When will he heal that big problem? Answer. I said, when will he heal that brain problem? When will he take that challenge, long-standing challenge, when will he take it away tonight? And immediately he arose and he took up the bed and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Read that part with me. We never saw it. On this passion, if every time we come before the Lord, what we we'll see is what we have always seen. We have not really come to the presence of the Lord. If every time we worship, every time we pray, every time we read the Bible, every time we interact spiritually, if what we see is what we have always seen, we are becoming traditional. We are not expecting that Christ be mightily present over here to do what we have never, never, never seen. But they said, we never, never saw it in this, on this fashion. When you do what you have never done, when you act the way you have never acted. This is the first time that these four men will come in the presence of Christ. This is the first time they'll climb up the roof and take away a tile. They have never done that before. When you have faith in the Lord like you never had before, when you believe in the Lord like you have never believed before, when you put all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and you focus on Christ like you have never done before, the result is you will see a miracle you have never seen. You'll see power manifestation you never saw. Well, when you believe the Lord and you say, I never saw this. I never expected this. But now I'm expecting what I never expected. I'm praying for what I never prayed for. I'm receiving what I never received. When you have that heart, when you have that mind, you will see in your heart, in your life today, something that never crossed your mind. The power of the Lord 
will prove to you that nothing is ever too hard for him. We're talking about the acts and the assurances of active faith. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the showing words of power and God's preeminence. God has preeminence over sickness, over evil power, over any challenge we have, over any difficulty we have. God has the preeminence. And when you understand that, and you see, yes, I see problem there, I see sickness there, I see infirmity there, I see weakness, I see whatever, and I see the pressure, but I come to the one that has preeminence over everything, literally, everything on earth, everything underneath the earth, anything in the sky, anything in the bush, I come to the God that has preeminence. Your problem, uh, asking permission, let me go. Let me go. Because problem cannot stand where you exalt the preeminence of the Almighty, of the Creator, of the Redeemer, the assuring world of power and God's preeminence. Number two, the active walk into the performance of God's promises. Actually, when we come to the Lord, we literally walk into the performance, walk of faith. The work of assurance, knowing that this is what he has said, and you must fulfill it and by your confession, by your thoughts, by everything that you think about, and by the way you act, the way you position yourself, you literally walk into the performance of miracle. Tonight, I say tonight, you walk into the performance of the miracle. Number three is the activated wonder. Activated wonders. Wonder is there all the time. In the presence of God, wonder is there all the time. And, but it's like a dog is sleeping. Everything is quiet, no backing, nothing at all until you activate and you wake up that dog. But when people say, let the sleeping dog lie, don't activate anything, don't do anything, don't command anything. Let things go on the way they have always gone then miracles will not be activated. Wonders will not be activated. But when you come and the faith in you that was dormant, that was sleeping, that was quiet, that faith activated, miracle must happen. And in the presence of God, as we come, we have activated wonders through the prayer we we'll pray in God's presence. Tonight is your night. The Lord will touch you. The Lord will turn everything around that had been dormant in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number one. Look at number one there. Number one, the assuring words of power and God's preeminence, assuring words of power. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, when, when the word of the king is, tell me, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? God is the king of kings. Christ is the king of kings. And when he speaks the word of forgiveness into your life, Nobody can ask him, what doest thou? When he speaks the word of healing, the word of deliverance into your life, when he speaks the word to move your mountain, no matter how long it's been there, 
nobody, no devil, no demon, no man can say what doest thou. What does that mean? He has final authority. Over your problem, he has final authority. Over your sickness, he has final authority. Over your predicament, he has final authority because where the king is, there is power. You see here tonight, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And because he's here, he is here as king, he is here as healer, he is here as redeemer, he is here as the mountain mover. And because he's here, he speaks, and where the word of the king is, there must be power manifestation in your life. In Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 32, we're reading from verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth. If you could think about it, about that, for some time, and then compare his power to the power that can heal you, the heavens and the earth, the stars, the sun, the moon, and all the planets in their different orbits, and he make them so orderly that they don't collide, and there is, there's no collision that will kind of explode anything here on earth. And he created the whole earth. And he created the seas, the ocean, everything in the proper uh, proportion. Think about that. And he creates all the, every blade of grass. And as you look at the blade of grass under a microscope, you see a wonderful, powerful symmetry and design. And this is the God that created, that made the heaven and the earth by his great power. When you think of that, then you understand if he can do that, and he has done that in my life, there's nothing too hard for him. In your life, there's nothing too hard for him. By the way, do you remember how he created the heavens and the earth? He spoke one sentence. Let there be light. Tell me. There was light. And all the creation of God with his word. He didn't have to go there for hundreds and thousands and millions of years trying to uh, evolve evolution. Trying to do this and that. He spoke. It was done. And your life tonight, he will speak. He will use the person you see in front of you as his microphone. But he seems talking to you. He seems speaking to you. And he speaks a word, your sins are forgiven. He speaks a word, your, your healing is guaranteed. I have it tonight. It says, and there is nothing to hatch for thee. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Any flesh sitting down, standing there today? I said any flesh sitting or standing there today? Where are they? It's your God. It's your creator. It's your healer. It's your deliverer. The God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And since you have said no, you'll find tonight nothing, no problem that you brought is ever going to be hard for him in Jesus' name. Look at um, 
Point number two here. Point number two is the active walk into the performance of God's promises. When God makes a promise, he wants to fulfill the promise. He has a mind that is going to fulfill the promise. Has he made any promise of salvation? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That promise will be fulfilled for you. Amen. By his stripes, I am healed. You didn't say that properly. By his stripes, I am healed. Will you be healed tonight? If that thing is inside, leave him kidney problem, if that thing is inside, fibroid and cancer, if that thing is inside, and you say, I feel it this way, at the mention of the name of Jesus tonight, all your pain, all your sickness, everything gone in Jesus' name. We activate the work of faith. By what we say with our mouth, we activate faith by the way we think in our heart. And we don't exaggerate the problem, lift up the problem, make the problem so big and our God so small. No, we begin to think about the power of God, about the possibilities in God, about the goodness of God, about the promise of God, and about the fact that our problem, so to say, they're so tiny, like a little fly, that even you can kill that fly and throw it away. And all those flies of demonic oppression, and the flies of sickness, the flies of disease, they are healed tonight. Amen. You will feel it in your body. Amen. The healing, the deliverance. And you say, I've been hearing of miracles, I got one. I've been hearing of that people testifying, I got mine. Confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. And so he tells us in Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. He'll touch your mouth. I said, he'll touch your mouth. When he touches our mouths, the things we used to say, we don't say them anymore. When he touches our mouth, all the cannot, cannot in our lives, everything will evaporate away. I cannot because I'm a little child, that one will vanish away. I cannot because I am sick, that one will vanish away. I can't do that because I am lame, that one will vanish away. And the Lord then, the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. What does that mean? I knew the word, but it wasn't his mouth. He learned the word, it wasn't in his mouth. He heard the word, but it wasn't in his mouth. When he had the word, what he was speaking out was different from the word. But now the Lord said, I have put my word in your mouth. The meaning is that word is now there. If you say it, 
it will be done. It's no more in the prophet's mouth, in the preacher's mouth, only in God's mouth is now in your mouth. Are you determined by pronouncing, by repeating the word in your mouth, I am healed. Heaven will confirm it. I am delivered. Heaven will confirm it. Now, you speak the word in your mouth, in your mouth, in your mouth. And you don't say, I'm dying. Be careful. You are not dying. You are living. Uncle died at this age. Cousin died at this age. Mama died at this age. I've got to the stage. I am going. No, that's not the word you put in your mouth. Speak the word that God has put in your mouth. And revival will come to every part of your being in Jesus' name. <laughs> Behold, I I put my words, not their words, my words. I have put my word, not your family's word, the doctor's word, the nurse's word, the medical exam word. You have a word higher than anybody is telling you you will live. You will be revived. And all those sicknesses and crawling things, they are off your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, see, I have this day set thee over the nations. I have, tell me the next word, this day. You know our problem? We come to the revival. We come to the night of supernatural wonder. And he puts a word in our heart that we didn't have before we came. He puts a word in our mouth that we didn't have before we came. And he puts an authority, an anointing upon us that we didn't have before we came. But... The unfortunate thing is the people still go on saying what they were saying. When the Lord had not touched them, they go back to the past and the things they used to say and the things they used to do and the thoughts they used to think, they're still thinking the same thought. No, no, that's, that's not right. When he said, now, this day, I'm doing something to you that you didn't have before. Then you come up to that level. And you act and you stay the same at the level you ought to say, See, I have this day sent thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. To root out. To root out. Anything that stands in your way, to root out. Anything that wants to say, who do you think you are? Well, he says, I am a new man. I have a new word in my mouth that was not there before. I have a new position, a new power. Who are you? I'm a man now, I'm talking for you. I'm a woman now, I'm talking for you of authority. That's all your amen. And so when you realize this is what I have done for you this day, you go out, you will root out. You will pull down. You will destroy every plant the heavenly father has not planted in your body, in your heart, in your business, in your profession, in your education. Everything the Heavenly Father has not planted, you'll not be calling on other people. Now the authority is with you. Root it out. Pull it down. 
and destroy that thing and it is destroyed in Jesus name and then to throw down you see all those things once you say this will not continue in my life I wrote it out you know, people are watching there. People will not allow me to, you know, make progress. And they always put that stumbling block in my way. Why don't you root it out? Tonight, why don't you pull it down? Tonight, why don't you throw it down? Your life will be according to the plan of heaven. It will not be according to what somebody, you know, will not allow him to go beyond this point in education. Who is that? When we have the performance of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and the preeminent God has made us, and he has said, this is where I am taking you. Anybody between you and that high point in your life, rooted out tonight. Pulled down tonight. Destroyed tonight. The enemy will not determine the level you stop. God and you. God in you, you in Christ. Already, you have the power, destroy them. And throw it down. And to build, you will build your life. You will build your family. You will build the work of your hand. I'm looking at you there, you will succeed. I said, you will succeed. Amen. Believe the word. Believe your own utterance. And believe what you say. And believe what you sing. You're quiet tonight. God bless you. Amen. As you sang, what a mighty God we serve. And you sang that nothing, absolutely nothing, is too hard for him. You blessed the church. Let those same words bless you. So that you are not just lifting up other people. You yourself, by the song of your mouth, by the word of your mouth, you are lifted up in Jesus' name. And so, you have that word that says, He will make you build and make you plant. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Every time you read the Bible, your quiet time, what seest thou about yourself, about the world? Every time you come to the night of supernatural wonders, what seest thou? What do you see now? Do you see miracle coming your way? Do you see power in your life? Do you see authority that even the devil cannot contradict? Every time, every time, every time the question comes, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod and an almond tree. I see a rod of an almond tree. Your, your life will not remain a dry rod. It shall become a fruit-bearing rod and branch in Jesus' name. Your wife will not remain a dry rod. She will be a fruit-bearing wife in Jesus' name. Your son 
your daughter will not be a dry rod will not stop at the level of education where you start no matter how far you went how high you went that your son will go beyond you that your daughter will go beyond you and nobody now nobody now that you are spending your time with will be a dry rod they'll be fruit bearing i said they'll be fruit bearing look at verse 12 in verse 12 and then said the lord unto me thou hast seen well when I see a miracle coming my way, God says to me, Thou hast seen well. When I see the dry rod of the past becoming fruit bearing rod, and He asks me, What do you see? And I say, I see fruitfulness. He said, You have seen well. Anybody see well there tonight? And it says, For I will hasten my word to perform it. God will hasten his word to be performed in your life even tonight in Jesus name. The word of salvation he'll perform. The word of healing he'll perform. The word of wonders he will perform in your life in Jesus name performance performance where will that performance be tonight really really re seriously not seriously where will the word be performed tonight confirmed in Jesus name we're looking at number three here number three we're looking at the activated wonders through prayers in God's presence. We are in God's presence. And the Lord will activate wonders in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Every promise that have been lying dormant there, the Lord will wake up that promise into your life tonight in Jesus' name. Everything he has injected into your life, the goodness of God, the power of God, the great possibilities we have in God that have been there. And you know it is sleeping somewhere there in your mind. And if it can only wake up, everything will become all right tonight in your life. Steady, steadfast salvation in your life. Amen. Dynamic healing. Demonstrated healing. Amen. Wonders of deliverance activated in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. In the presence of God, always there are wonders. The ocean of wonders never dry up. In the presence of God, the great power for wonders never dries up in the presence of God. Uh, you know, it's, um, you know, people that don't understand God, they say the God of wonders, what he used to do, the God of power, what he used to do. No, there is no past tense in God. I said there's no past tense in God. Yesterday, today, and forever, he makes his wonders to come alive in every life in Jesus' name. Uh, look, at, look at Psalm 16. I'm reading from verse 11. Thou will show me. Wonderful. Thou will show me. I, I wanted you to say that for yourself. Uh, you see, those people in Bible days, that's how they be killed Goliath. 
That's how the rod of Moses opened the Red Sea. That's how the rod brought water out of the rock. Because they personalized the promise of God. And the performance came to them. And they did say, the Lord will show us the Lord will show them in the generation to come uh, when uh, after we have gone. No, at this time, the Lord will show me. Say it. The Lord will show me. Thou will show me the path of life. Not the path of death. Not the path of depression, stress. Distress, uh -uh. from tonight, all that is gone. Yeah. The path of suffering, sickness, all that is gone. Yeah. The path of regrets and remorse and reproach, uh -uh. that one tonight is gone. Yeah. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence. In thy presence, where are you tonight? In thy presence, I say, where are you tonight? You know, some people come to church and they say, I am under oppression. I am under sickness. I'm under a curse. In God's presence, can there be a curse that will remain? Tell me. In God's presence, can, can there be another power coming from any other place that will abide? No. Change your thought. Change your language. Your life will come from the bottom of the sea and come to the very top. You remember Jonah was right there down deep. In the bottom of the sea. But when he said, salvation is of the Lord. And he said, I will remember. And I will put my prayer. I will send my prayer to his throne. He came from the bottom. He came to the top. You are coming from the bottom. And the fish, even the fish, he couldn't eat him up. You know, the fish just uh, discovered, uh, look at this, uh, this one will be sweet meat. Your, your body will not be sweet meat in their mouth. Yeah. And couldn't even hurt him. And Jonah did not have to go for, you know, rehabilitation somewhere. After he came out of that fish, when you live here, you don't need any other rehabilitation. Everything has taken place. Yeah. And so, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And there are pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Everything good you have missed in the past, pleasures forevermore. A new day has begun for you. New life has come for you. The Lord is blessing you right now. Yeah. He's turning everything around in your life right now. Yeah. In Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Look at verse 19 there. It says, repent therefore. Now, that repent doesn't mean that, you know, you begin to cry and cry and cry. That's not repentance. Just to change your mind. Just turn around. You've been looking at this direction, and the direction is not bringing peace of mind. It's not bringing victory in your life. It's not bringing joy in your life. Repent. That just means turn away. You're looking at something that gives you depression, that gives you kind of weakness, kind that gives you like, uh, you know, you, uh, almost you are going to die. That gives you unbelief, perceive. God will never forgive you. Turn away from there and turn this other direction and your forgiveness is guaranteed in Jesus name your salvation is guaranteed in Jesus name 
and your healing, your deliverance, and your victory, and your dominion guaranteed in Jesus' name. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When you come to the Lord, he blots out all your sins. How many sins? He wipes them out. He cleans them up. And he doesn't even allow the remembrance of those sins anymore. And if you need that, all you need to do is turn around and face the Lord and you have that in Jesus' name. And also, also, also your sickness, your sickness will be blotted out. All the consequences of sin will be blotted out. Everything you carry about, the bad luck and this and that, everything blotted out tonight in Jesus' name. Then it says, when the times of refreshing, look at that, when the times of refreshing shall come from where? Talk. Say it out. When refreshing, you've been dry, you've been sorrowful, it's like famine is going on in your life and in your family. No food to eat. And you look here, they say we're in the same condition too. You've come to the presence of the Lord tonight. Go back home and receive abundance. Because we've come to the presence of the Lord. Everything negative, taken away. Everything oppressive, taken away. Everything that makes us cry and cry and cry, taken away in Jesus' name. Everything that makes you to say, I wonder, I, why this, why this? Everything blotted out tonight in Jesus' name. Because, 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 because the times, plural, the times, plural, of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. For you. For me. You got it today. For me. It will come in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when I tell you to stand up, you will stand, don't stand yet, you will stand like you never stood. When I tell you, now pray, open your mouth and ask the Lord, you will pray and you will ask for what you have never asked for. When you stand, you stand not like somebody who is barely living, but almost collapsing. Look up. You stand. Stand right. Stand up. Stand well. And stand with confidence. Stand with joy, knowing that every problem you brought, every sickness you brought, every depression you brought, every negative thing you brought, everything is cleared away from your life now in Jesus' name. <laughs> tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, what are you getting tonight? Why are you here tonight? What's the challenge? What's the problem that you have weighing you down today? Call upon the name of the Lord. With him, nothing shall be impossible. In him, no regret, no remorse. No loss in his presence, no sickness can stand, no power can stand. You come to the presence of the Lord today. The salvation in his presence, there's power in his presence. There's deliverance in his presence. Miracle in his presence. 
authority in his presence. Tell him, tell him, tell him, what seest thou? You don't see barrenness anymore. You don't see fruitlessness anymore. You see well. You see salvation. You see well. You see forgiveness. You see well. Everything good, every good thing that you see will come upon your life. You see healing, you see well, it will be performed. Deliverance and dominion, don't you see that? You see well, it will be performed, it will be done. I see wonders in your life. And if you see those wonders in your life, you have seen well. You have seen well. It will be done. No more crying. No more weeping. See well. See the promises performed in your life. See the goodness of God performed in your life. See the glory coming from on high into your life, into your family. You see well. And it will be done. You see great possibilities. You see well, it will be done. You repent of sin, you reject every evil, you turn away from every terrible, weakening, sinful habit in your life. And you say, I see forgiveness. You see well. You see well. It will be done. It will be done. I see God's favor. I see God's grace. I see divine ability coming into me so I can do what I've never been able to do before. You see, well, it will be done. No more like a dry rot. Now you're fruitful. Now you are successful. I see well. I see well. Believe it. It is done. Says I put my word in your mouth. I've given you the power and the authority root out root it out every plant the heavenly father has not planted in your life root it out pull it down pull it down the Lord has marked you for progress for success for achievement, for joy, for victory, for dominion, for total freedom, anything standing there before you, pull it down. Destroy it. 
but Christ in you who has come to destroy all the works of the devil. Destroy that thing. The word is in your mouth. Throw it down. Throw it down. Don't complain anymore. They will not allow me to succeed. They will not allow me to make it. You decide, you determine. You'll make it and you will make it. You are set you up to build, to plant, to achieve, to succeed. The word is right there. Whatever you have asked, know that it is done. Whatever you have rooted up, know it is rooted out. Whatever you have pulled down, know it is pulled down. Whatever you have destroyed, every work of the devil, know. It is destroyed. Whatever you have thrown down, no more your body, no more your head, no more your life, no more your family. No, it is done. 